you said you like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but how? How can be? How can we be filled with the Holy Spirit? And then how we can be used by God? Okay. Number one. Number one. Hate and you know first is repent and hate and forsake all sins. So it's repent, hate, and turn away from all sins. Because God is holy. God doesn't like any private sin, any secret sin. Some people think, well, God don't God doesn't see me every time when I sin, but He sees you. So please be aware that God's eyes is everywhere. And but God is looking at us with joy and love. He's looking at us with love. But when we continue in sin, then He can see every single sinful thought. Pardon me? So any sinful thought we have, even before we commit it, that's already sin. So hate the sin, that's the, that's the secret to overcoming sin. But I will have one session on, about how to overcome sins. But here, it's just simple. I say it is you hate the sin and you know that sins are destructive so you don't want any part of any kind of sin. Second is the Bible. Read the Bible, believe the Bible, and apply the Bible. Now there are many people who experience the Holy Spirit and then they say, I have a lot of experience already, I don't need the Bible. And sometimes you can see some people who some evangelists, they operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. But when they preach the word, they just read the verse and then say a couple sentences and then he kept on talking about other things. Instead of talking about what the verse, the Bible verse says, and instead of talking about how we apply it. You notice I spend a lot of time talking about God's nature from the Bible verses and talk about how good God is and how we can follow God totally and dedicate our life to God. So apply the Bible. Instead of just saying, I have the Holy Spirit, I experience the Holy Spirit, that's enough. So I hope that you realize that it's not just experiencing the Holy Spirit. We need the Bible also. Number three, faith. Believe that the Holy Spirit, believe that God really wants to fill us. Zephaniah 3.17 You write that down. Zephaniah 3.17 He takes great delight in you. He quiets you with His love. He rejoices over you with singing. To believe that God is really happy to see us. When you hunger for God, God is very happy. God is very excited. So you say, Lord, I'm so happy. I'm so happy you want to feel me. So when I pray, I don't say, God, where are you? I don't say, God, are you going to work on these people? I just believe God is going to work on these people. So I say, oh, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You notice how Jesus prayed before he called Lazarus to come out? He did not pray to the Father, say, please, Father, Father, come, 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 please, please take him out from death. He did not do that. He just said, Father, glorify your name, and you have glorified your name. That he just, he knows that God is going to perform what he wants to do. So we have faith that God wants to fill us. So when I pray, I say, Lord, I know you want to fill me with the Holy Spirit. You want to fill me with your presence. And then when we learn to open our heart, then we can experience it more. Okay, so number three is faith. Number four is spend as much time as you can to worship in spirit and in truth. And to worship in spirit, a whole spirit includes the spirit and the soul. And the verse to worship, you know, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. So it includes the whole soul and the whole spirit. And that the soul includes, write this down please, the soul includes the mind, 
the will and our feelings. The mind, the will, and our feelings. First, the mind. Now, some people just pray with the mind in a sense they just use the mind to pray. What I mean is not this. It's the whole mind to say, God is good. The whole Bible is true. And everything in the Bible is good. I like everything about God. So the whole mind say, God, God is good. I like God. I want God. I need God. God is the best. The whole mind agrees with God. So when I pray, also in my daily life, my whole mind agrees with God. God is the best that can happen to me. God is the most wonderful. And the will, the will is our desire. I decide to dedicate my life to God because I see that if I follow God totally, I can bless so many people in just a few days time here, right? And you can go and bless more people. So God can use me to bless so many people and you can do the same in the future. So are you willing to be used by God and say, yes, I want to go higher and higher in, in a, serving you and loving you and blessing other people? I hope you have this heart. Now, but some people just want glory. They say, I want a million people meeting. They just want glory. But for me, it doesn't matter. How many people there are, it's okay. I'm not looking for number. Of course, I like more people, but it doesn't matter. When there are a few people, I don't mind. My heart is just to use the whole life, my whole life to bless people. So I hope you have this mind, this heart, this, uh, this will. As I said, I'm 66. If I retire, you know, many pastors retire 70. But if that's four years from now, actually it's three and a half years from now, I say that's too short. If it's 80 years old, if I'm retired 80 years old, it's just 13 and a half years, that's still too short. I want to serve as long as what God has given me. So I hope you have this same heart. Yes, I don't want myself to be glorified. I just want to bless people. I just want to follow your will in every area, every area. In my relationship with my wife, in my relationship with my church members, in my relationship with the people I go to minister to, I want to do whatever God wants me to do. Just want God's will done. So the desire. And to live as long as God wants me to live. But many people, because they are tired, many people are tired because they are living under the law. A lot of demands. Amen. And they demand of themselves so they become very tired and they say, Jesus come back soon so I don't have to work. <laughs> now some people look for Jesus coming back so that they don't have to work. But we want to, you know, want Jesus to come back soon too. But we want to prepare more people for Jesus' second coming. Too many people are too lazy and not ready. And the gospel has not been spread. And many Christians are lukewarm. We need more people. So I hope you have the will. Yes, I want to follow God totally. So in your prayer, the whole mind say, God is good, I agree with God. And my whole will is to stay in God's presence for as long as possible. Now for me, I can stay in God's presence all the time. Do you feel the comfort when you pray? So you can enjoy. But don't just say, enjoy. But when you enjoy, you say, it's God blessing me. It's God blessing me. It's God moving in me. Thank you. So I can stay praying for a long time. And then, the feelings. Do you have feelings toward your family members? Do you have feelings? You're feeling toward the cake you like, the food you like? When you see ice cream, do you have ice cream here? I heard that in some African country, only the women eat ice cream, the men don't eat ice cream. Is that true here? No, no. <laughs> I went to another country, they said, only the women and the children like ice cream. I said, that's, that's strange. But you would like food, right? Can you like God more than you like food and like people? And really say, I like you, I like you. Really all the time. That's the key to spending more time to, with Him. It's not just saying, I have to do it. But we enjoy it. 
that we really like God. And any time, actually when I'm preaching and teaching, at the same time, I'm liking God at the same time. I like God at the same time. Lord, Lord I like you. Then we don't have to think in the prayer. I don't have to think in the prayer. I just like God. And then the Holy Spirit, Psalm 103, verse 1. Psalm 103, verse 1. All that is in me, praise His holy name. So all that is in me, look at me. My whole spirit, hallelujah. My whole spirit worship God. My whole spirit hunger for God. My whole spirit love God. That's why I ask you to say, to do this. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you learn to do it from the bottom of your heart, you feel joy right away. Yes. Now, can you try it? Can you try it now? <sighs> now, those who have experienced the joy, try to do it from the bottom of the heart. You need to do it every day. You know, I've done it for years, so I can do it anytime. Anytime I think of Jesus, His joy will come through me. Okay? So, so when you think of prayer as, I enjoy God, I love God, I like God. So when you're walking, you like God. And then that's in the presence of God. But concentrate in God, not in the feeling. But the feeling helps. Because the feeling, the experience helps you to realize that God is working in you. Okay? So that's number four. Spend as much time as possible. If you want to uh, minister with the anointing of the Holy Spirit at least half an hour or one hour every day. Especially these few days. When you are here, you actually carry the anointing on you. If you spend one hour or more praying every day, you can keep the anointing. Like someone shared just now, I did not lay, lay hand on anyone yesterday, but the person went home and sleep better. Two persons said that, right? Yes. Two persons said that they sleep better. So the anointing was upon them. So the anointing is upon you now. So you spend more time praying to keep the anointing. When I experience the Holy Spirit, let me tell you, like when I experienced the joy of the Lord, on that day, I kept the joy because I don't want to lose that. So I kept loving God from the heart. I noticed because at that time, I already have experienced the Holy Spirit for a period of time. I've learned to love God from my heart. And as after I experience the joy, I love God from the heart and the joy keep coming. And then I have to take a bus go, to go home. On the bus, I want to keep the joy. But I cannot laugh out loudly. So I learned to laugh quietly. It's like this. So I was like this on the bus all the way. And you notice that sometimes when I when I demonstrate how I rejoice in the Lord, I say, Hallelujah. <laughs> I can laugh out like that, or I can just laugh out without sound. It's like when you say, How are you? But I can say, no, if I do not connect to my vocal cord, then there's no sound. Yeah. So you can. So I did that while I was on the bus, and I went home. I kept staying in the joy of Lord. And the next day, and the next day, and then every day, and then now, any time I think of Jesus, the joy will come out. Okay. So spend more time, especially these few days as long as possible and also even after the meeting i'm happy to pray for you to experience him and to keep the presence now when you are praying some people were praying like this it's like being very passive be active like um elisha elisha hunger for the anointing and elijah says stay here and wait wait for me Elijah said, I will not stay here. I will follow you. And then finally, Elijah said, what do you want? I want double your anointing. <laughs> so he wants a strong anointing. So he followed Elijah everywhere. So what I mean is, really hunger for God. Don't just be passive. When you're praying, don't just pray like this. But be active. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Love you, Father. Now, you don't have to be loud. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Now, the moment I relax my body and I open my heart, I immediately feel the pushing of the Holy Spirit. But when I don't 
let my body be pushed back, then I pray for people, then I won't fall down. But if I relax, immediately I will fall down. So I, I would, uh, I, I discern how to pray in the spirit at the same time how not to be out, out of control. Okay? And then the next point is, five. number five. Number five. Number five is that is for the Great Commission. The Holy Spirit is for the Great Commission and for obeying God. As Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. And whatever I've taught you, to, commanded you to do, teach them to obey. And I will be with you always to the end of ages. So the promise is when we preach the gospel and raise up people's spiritual life, then he'll be with us always. Now there are some people who just want anointing. When they hear there is an evangelist, they go there. They hear someone with strong anointing, they go there. We don't go after people, we go after God. And we want the anointing not just for enjoyment, it's for a transformation of our life and also for ministry to bless people, to do evangelism and, and to raise up people's spiritual life. Okay, that's number five. Number six, laying on of hands and spirit-filled prayer meetings are helpful. But laying of hands doesn't replace your own prayer. You have to go home and pray. But the laying of hands is like you learn to ride a bicycle and someone push you a little bit and then you can go you can go for a long a longer way, right? So I pray for you today, it's like helping you to start. If you keep the anointing, then the anointing can stay in you. If you keep that every day, that's what I did when Carlos and Aconia prayed for me. I kept the anointing every day. And up to today, every day I can experience Him. And I never experience spiritual loneliness after that. All the time, I am spiritually strong and steady. And thank God for that. Okay, and then number seven is manage our life. Manage emotions and negative thinking and sins and all this, which I will talk about in another session. Now, if you are filled with lust or sins or negative thinking and negative feelings, you cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you'll be attacked by evil spirit all the time when you drive out demons from people. So we need to learn to take care of all different problems, okay? Let's go through this again. One, number one, repent, repent hate sin, 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 and sin. forsake or give up sins. Number two, Read the, Bible. Read the Bible, love the Bible, apply the Bible. it, apply the Bible. Now many people, they listen to the Bible, read the Bible, but they don't apply it. They still have anger and frustration and negative thinking and feelings. Okay, number three, faith. faith. To believe that God really wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Number four, spend, time with God. spend longer time to love God, to worship with our spirit and our soul. And the soul includes what? The mind, the, mind, the will, the and, will the and the feelings. And then the spirit is all that is in me. All that is in me actually includes the spirit and the soul. The whole person loves God. So learn to cry to God from your spirit. Hallelujah. Now at the beginning you use your voice, but later you don't have to use your voice. You look at me now. Now, I can use my voice, hallelujah, <laughs> then I can feel the joy. But I don't have to say it. I can just, in my heart, think of God. Actually, in my private prayer, a lot of time I don't say anything. My, my spirit just ascends to God. My spirit ascends to God. And then number five is for the Great Commission and for obedience of God. It's not just for enjoyment. Number six. Lean on hands. Laying our hands and spirit-filled meetings are helpful. And number seven, handle different problems and you know, manage our whole life. 